It's a little hot Tuesday. Think race is on Saturday. Breakfast with Bob. Oh, yeah. And Pacho Man. Welcome, everybody, to day two. Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are brought to you by EAS Myoplex, by Hoka One One, by Polar Velofix, Normatec, Four Seasons Hualalai, Emeo Power Breather. Each one of our guests will be getting a, a Velofix certificate today. And our next guest, he was seventh last year here in Kona. Boris Stein from Germany. Of course, you're from Germany. <laughs> Top 10 in Germany go together. How are you, Boris? I'm good, thanks. Uh, it's a pleasure That's to be here. Wonderful. Thanks so much for, for taking time. So let's go back a little bit. Growing up, what were your sports? Yeah, I'm growing up uh, in Germany as everybody and playing soccer yes. there. And uh, But uh, I wasn't at that level. It was no pro level. It was uh, the, the lowest level. And at the university, I started with triathlon. It's now 10 years ago. Ten years? Yes, ten years ago and uh, yes, I'm pro since, I'm really a pro since five years. So did you start with ITU and try to do the shorter distance? No, in, uh, with, my, with, my no no, with my no swimming background <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> to go to ITU races, by, but I started at German Bundesliga yes. uh, once and uh, yeah, uh, I got uh, Second last uh, out of the water you and uh, um, give it all on the bike and finish 25th, I think. Yes, 25, yes. I think. Uh, it, it wasn't bad at all. Uh, Mario Mola wins by. Uh, yes. By. Uh, what's to say? Uh, to say but uh, it, it's not. Uh, it's not made for me. So. It wasn't made. And you, <laughs> you in 2010, you went to a long distance duathlon camp, and but you knew the longer distance was going to be better for you. Yes, for sure. Every every non-drafting race is uh, better for me, and if it if it if the distance is longer, um, I better. have more time to close the <laughs> swim gap. <laughs> but you've had success. You've had success here. You've you've done well here. Yes, Kona suits me. That's that's right. That's Why do you think? Yeah, I think uh, for two reasons. Uh, one reason is uh, that uh, it's. It's a tough course. It's not not the easy one. It's uh, it's windy out there, and uh, even if there are a lot of pros, you have to cycle a lot of by your own because the wind gets from the side. You get wind from the side, yeah. and uh, it's not that you have this this big advantage if you if you're riding uh, 12 meters behind uh, behind the contenders. And uh, for sure, the other thing is uh, that's uh, that's the heat. Right. And uh, it's, I think it's a little bit inborn if you if you can deal with the heat or not. And uh, I have no problem. No problem in the heat. So, till till now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe on su Saturday, but uh, you will never know. So you turned pro in 2012. Is that right? Yeah, I think uh, I uh, took my first pro license uh, 2012. And um, what was your first win? My first win was, uh, it was called then uh, Challenge Kreisgau. Yes. And um, now it's uh, Ironman Kreisgau and uh, I think it's one of the two, two famous German 70.3 uh, distance races. Yes. And uh, this was also German championship uh, at middle distance. And yeah, I got there. Th after that, I got the chance from Kenyon. They they give to me ride the their bike. Yeah, to ride their bike, and they give me the advantage to to uh, to be a real pro. Yes, uh, you can you can ho take the license, but uh, having some support makes a yeah, big difference. You know. That way, you can travel and do the things you need to do. And that was that was a chance to be to be financial a little bit more confident with yes. with that deal with Kenyon. And after that, I I tried and yeah. It worked well since today. So in four, 2014, uh, you, you win Ironman Switzerland? Yeah, that's right. That was my, my first Ironman win. That was my second, second Ironman. 
First one was uh, Ironman Lake Tahoe. Yes, that's a brutal course. That was a brutal. How cold was it? Was that the year? It was like 27 or 30 degrees. Yeah, it, I'm not uh, that uh, common in Fahrenheit, yes. but it was uh, zero, zero degrees Celsius for sure. <laughs> uh, there was snow all over the mountains, and uh, it was a, a, a amazing atmosphere. The sea. Uh, the, the lake was uh, the warmest, uh, the warmest. It was better to be in the water yeah, than out of the water. Sure. And you couldn't see anything at the, at the lake because there was dust <laughs> the one meter, <laughs> one meter over the lake. And uh, it was the steam, steam coming off of the yeah, water. Yeah, you could you couldn't see the next buoy. It was <laughs> totally crazy. And uh, yeah, uh, I think for the pro it was was an okay race, but for the age groupers who who made more than uh, 12 hours oh, it was in the, in the it, dark it had to be yeah, cold in the dark and and i think after five o'clock it it getting so cold there over the over the day it wasn't wasn't so cold i right. think 15 15 degrees celsius yes and uh, that was okay but if it's getting dark it was it was so crazy you have to turn everything out over the day and then everything on in the in the night <laughs> i remember talking to joe gambles he said he drove to the start in his wetsuit in the car yeah. <laughs> and he had there was ice on his bike seat when he got to the transition area that, that was so cold yeah and uh, i think it was my longest uh, transition in t1 because you have to have to uh, you were shivering so much <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and, and, but you ended up finishing the race yeah i finished the eight it was uh, for my first uh, iron man i was uh, I wasn't really prepared for it. I made uh, 70.3 worlds in Las Vegas before, yes. and I was prepared for that. And uh, then I made it as an as an. So you go from Vegas, where it's about a thousand degrees, <laughs> <laughs> to Tahoe, where it's about zero. Yeah, but it was uh, that been two weeks between. Oh, two weeks in <laughs> yeah. between. So uh, was that the coldest you've ever been in a race? That. Uh, it wasn't raining. That that was that was That's nice that, that was good. And if you are ra if you are ra racing in Europe, they are always in the rain. All, not always in the rain, but it, it can can be rain sometimes. And and then it gets real. It's getting real cold. So. so in 2014, you you win Ironman Switzerland, and that helps you get here, right? And you we were t 20th in 14. Yes. And when you raced here, did you get that feeling that this course is good for me? Well, I, at the first time, I, I didn't really know. I, I did this. I don't get this feeling at the first time. It was uh, it was a solid performance. Yes. And I was uh, I was happy with it. But uh, I think in the next years, I after the next years, I, I really know that that it, that something. That I could be uh, could be make a good performance here. Just yeah, because you not finished tenth that yeah, next not, year. Not at the first year. That was. Uh, I think it's it's special in Kona because a lot of guys race for top ten. Yes. Right. And, and uh, or or the win. Or sure. And uh, everything after the top ten is not that important because you know, don't earn prize money after right. the top ten, and you don't get the media. Uh, uh, media attention attention yeah. there and uh, if you finished uh, behind the top 10 it's not that not that not that big thing I think. right yes. right well it makes it hard too because if you when you're in 13th or 14th place it's hard to keep going when you know gosh now I gotta got to try to get points for next year so then it's easy to go while well, I'll pull the plug and go to Arizona or somewhere else yeah for sure that's uh, but you see that the guys outside of the top 10 are, are normally totally disappointed with their race and uh, yeah you can catch them normally easily if you are if you are if you're first timer and right. you you know that's the race for me yeah and uh, for example i overtook uh, marino von honaka or, or guys like this that's uh, before I couldn't imagine that I that I catch them yes and for me it was a big thing to, of course. to catch them yeah. and th that helped you with your confidence yeah for sure and especially when you go from 20th and 14 to 10th right here in Kona and 15 that's a huge jump yeah that's a big thing that after the, also finishing top 10 is a, is a real big thing for me 
and I think for every everyone who's at my at my level right and uh, after that I know I could be even better here yes what I always look at is you know usually there's sort of a gap between first and second and then when you go from third 13th <laughs> there's like 40 seconds 40 seconds 40 seconds where you know that they're going back and forth did you see that 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 either last year or the year before where there was a lot of position changes in that last 10k no, no no that's the kona that's the kona craziness uh, for me yes. I, mean, I didn't know uh, not for patrick lang yes. for example <laughs> but for me i always uh, run out of the energy lab and i saw the guys before me yes one minute two minutes yes at the at the yes at the long straights and uh, you think i have to push harder and i get them i get them i get them and you push harder and uh, the guy in front yes that's the same. Not, he's like, oh, not, he's coming. I better yeah, push out. It's so crazy. I, I never, in the last two years, nothing changed after uh, after the energy lab for me. So I run uh, 12k in the same, in the same, uh, same place, same place, and same difference to the next next athlete. So crazy here, that and everyone fun. pushed to the limit. You too, but no, nothing changed. So also in 15, you won Ironman, uh, Ironman France. Yeah, for sure. I think that was my best performance on on a on a Ironman outside Kona yes. uh, since now. Yes. And why? What was it? What was it about that race? Yeah, I think I had one of these special days where where you have to say nothing can be better after that. It right. was uh, I was uh, confident the whole day on m with my biking and my running. I started with a 10, 10 minute gap of. Uh, 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 Jerome, yes, uh, on the on on in T2, but um, I was the whole time. Even it was ten minutes. I was ten minutes behind. I was the whole time confident that I can catch him. And uh, normally you uh, you run uh, slower in the second half of the marathon, but but I could push after wow after the half marathon mark. And yeah, that was one of the one, one of, of those these days. days where where everything's yeah. and that's what you want here on Saturday. One of those days. Yeah, for sure. Especially this season, I hadn't really such a great great day, and maybe in yes. a race it will take place. Well, even I mean, you were six this Ironman South Africa, uh, you know, eight sixteen two fifty four marathon. Yeah. That's always good because that's a hard course. So. Your preparation leading in, did did you where did you train leading into this? Yeah, as uh, the last two years, I have been at uh, the Woodlands, Texas. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it there. We we have uh, Patrick, Pat, I was Patrick there Lange. with Patrick last year and this year too, and we have uh, meeting such nice friends, and we are living in the houses there. It's such. Yeah, and you're getting so much from from then, and uh, it's a great place to train and, and learn a lot of uh, of U.S. and Texan lifestyle there. It's, <laughs> yes. A German in Texas. Yeah, German. Did you Texas. get yourself a hat and boots yet, or anything? I think it's not so crazy at the Woodlands. It's uh, <laughs> it's a little bit more. <laughs> That's very fun. Yeah. So, were you surprised when you saw Patrick Lange run 2:39 last year here? Because you're a guy who trains with him all the time. I was not surprised that he can run fast yes but so fast uh, i didn't didn't imagine that he can run this yes. right I mean, it's one thing to do it in texas it's another thing to do it here yeah for sure but the the, uh, the climate the climate is really similar yes but but uh, but for sure but for sure also for sure it's uh it's a more it's a tougher right. race course here yes so you go from 20th to 10th to 7th and Obviously, next thing is to get in the top five. Uh, do you, you're with your preparation. You're feeling like you're there. Yeah, I'm totally. I, I my last results uh, showing that I'm that I'm on the right way. Yes. And um, I'm also totally happy with my preparation now, and happy with my baby steps I made last year. So my goal is to improve for sure, and. Uh, and if a uh, podium or something like this is in reach, yes, I, I go fall in and uh, and uh, I think I it's the top ten. I've, I've been in top ten two times, 
and I don't have to be there next time and I, I'm, I'm ready for You're ready for, for something bigger from, for something bigger the podium yes. would be nice podium would be nice but I wouldn't wouldn't say now that podium is my goal yes because uh, um, I'm addicted to other ones with my weak swim and uh, but I hope for a tough race and then everything's possible perfect Boris thank you so much for taking time and joining us really a pleasure to get to meet you yeah thanks in a lot person for we've done radio <laughs> this is the first time we get to meet you here Boris Stein has been our guest Pacho Man take us out oh, it's Aloha Tuesday big races on Saturday oh I first went by.